Today we're going to be talking about the downfall of Charlie D'Amelio and the D'Amelio family and I think this is a really interesting perspective and whatnot and I am just going to be sharing my thoughts. So let's get into it. So everything I am using is linked and listed in the description box down below so if I don't mention a product for whatever reason it's down there. And this video again it's no hate to Charlie by any means. It's more of like my thoughts on how Hollywood can absolutely take a negative effect on someone and especially as you know she started out as a teenager. I'm first going in with Milk Hydro Grip. If you don't know who Charlie D'Amelio is, she is a TikToker. She originated on TikTok I think back in like 2019 and she got super popular during the pandemic. Charlie was known for doing a ton of dance videos and she was like she was quickly like gaining just millions of subscribers and for a long time she was the most followed person on TikTok. Now I don't know if that's still true but if that doesn't say how popular she was she has like 150 million followers on TikTok. Blows my mind <laughs> like 150 million followers. It's like half of the United States. I'm going in with the KVD Good Apple Serum Foundation and then mixing in the Pacifica Bronzing Drops. Charlie what um really got famous off of her dancing videos and her parents inevitably moved out to Los Angeles with her sister. Rascal, what are you doing buddy? Her sister Charlie and they basically, my dogs in here, are in here and they're deciding to wrestle. Like what? It's always the boys too. Piglet is an unbothered queen. Like she's just living her best life. <laughs> Bought this like crazy big mansion and everything and then what I think is interesting is that the parents really got into Charlie and Dixie's like business. Okay, they have their own TikTok accounts. They were like managing every project and basically they were getting into like every business under the sun and I um, checked out the D'Amelio show. I've only seen the first season because honestly it's not my vibe whatsoever. I also don't like reality TV. It was kind of just like hard to watch but it's really really crazy to see that it's really difficult to see that their parents are like overloading them with like brand deals and like work. These girls at the time are like 17, 18, 19 years old and you know with their parents kind of organizing it the parents get a cut so it's really like the kids are like Charlie and Dixie who are now like you know adults but they are working for the parents. It's like almost from the vibe I get is like the parents want this more than the children. It's super cringy to me like I don't know like can't you guys do your own thing please? Okay I'm just going in with a little bit of the Tarte Ultra Creamy Shape Tape right here. It's a little light for me right now. This is more of like a winter shade that's for sure. So I really think the culprit of all of this downfall is due to Mark and Heidi D'Amelio. So they're taking deals that like it doesn't even really seem connected to Charlie and D'Amelio, Charlie and Dixie D'Amelio's brand. Like they're doing popcorn where they like cosplayed as Walmart employees and it was like super fun. I didn't think that was super fun. They came out with like a shoe line. They were doing a line with Hollister. They came out with a mattress collaboration. I kid you not, a mattress collaboration. Like it was just so many different avenues and it's like, okay, we're focusing on Charlie here. Charlie is revolved around dance. Wouldn't you think there would be like some like athletic wear that she would come out with or stuff like that? You know what I mean? Like what about something dance and like fitness related or even like beauty related like they were the face of Morphe 2 for example but why can't you do anything like that and I really truly think it's because um, their parents are money hungry. I just used the physician's formula butter glow contour wand. This is really good. I like this. Um, I think I like my Tarte one more but I still like this. And then I'm gonna go on with the e.l.f. Halo Glow Beauty Wand Blush in the shade Rose You Slay. And it makes me have a lot of sympathy for these girls because they're saying like, you know, they're having panic attacks and all this stuff and it's like, they're 
they're being so overworked and I'm sure, yeah, the paychecks are great. <laughs> like, you know, I, I can't imagine what they would charge to do like an ad read or anything like that. But like, they're just oversaturating the market. In return, I feel like people are watching them less and less because if you go on Charlie's TikTok account, um, for example, a lot of it is sponsored content. And you know how people feel about their sponsored content. You know, they're very picky about it. They're very critical about it. That in turn can bother people when, you know, this like a plethora of content is coming out. Something I think is pretty natural um, is Dixie came out with music. She's singing now and I think that's a very natural transition especially if that's something that she's really interested in and then charlie came out with a single so they're both singing but it really just i get the vibe and cruel world happy mind did a phenomenal video on on the demilios and she really broke it down it's like a three hour video but um she really did a good job breaking down <laughs> just the gist of the D'Amelio's and really pointing out Heidi and Mark are the ones really behind you know the emotional burnout that these girls are dealing with and she showed clips from like later seasons of their show and it's very clear that Heidi and Mark are trying to make the D'Amelio family the next Kardashian family. I don't even think that's like, I don't even know if they're, they can even do that, you know, because honestly, people just are, don't like the Kardashians the way they once did. And so these people, you know, trying to be like the Kardashians, I really don't think that's going to get perceived well. All right. I just used the NYX Buttermelt Bronzer. I have the shave Deserve Butter. <laughs> and then I'm going in with the Jaclyn Cosmetics Highlighter in the shade Sparks very pretty. I think it's a really interesting dynamic, especially as these girls are now legal adults. I feel like there could be some sort of legal thing to kind of like separate them from their parents in a way. That's just me. But I feel like the money is so good. I mean, they're getting millions upon millions of dollars. I feel like, you know, because the money is so good, they not, their parents are helping them like set up for the rest of their life. But in return, they're working all the time. Um, a clip that really stands out to me from the D'Amelio show is when the girls are having a meeting with their parents and like their managers or something. I don't know. And they're laying out just stacks of binders of different projects that these girls are working on. And Heidi makes a comment and says, <laughs> We just want to make sure Charlie has time to do dance. But it's like, they aren't going to take away any of the binders away so that Charlie has time to do dance. And so in return, so in return, these newly minted adults, <laughs> these poor girls, are being subjected to this insane amount of burnout. And it makes me have so much sympathy for them. You know, Charlie has said that like negative comments really affect her online. I get that. You know, she's gotten a lot of hate before and I'm not neither defending her nor hating on her. It's just really sad because I, the culprit to all of this is their parents. For eyebrows, I just used the e.l.f. Instant Lift Brow Pencil and then the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Freeze Gel. I'm going to quickly do my lip combo here. We have the Jaclyn Cosmetics Lip Liner in the shade Blondie, the Glam Light and Frosted Flakes Lipstick, and then the ColourPop and Winx Club Ultra Glossy Lip in the shade Flora. And this is very reminiscent of like child stars. Like for example, I saw Cole Sprouse's podcast interview with Call, the Call Her Daddy podcast. I thought it was interesting because he said that, you know, he was working so that his mother could get a paycheck. And I think that's a really good example of Charlie and Dixie, but on a different level. Charlie and Dixie aren't these you know, little kids going on TV shows and doing commercials. They're adults that decided to have their parents piggyback off their career and in return is stressing them out. I think it would stress anyone out. And you know, you go on Charlie and D Dixie's Instagram and they're not as popular 
anymore. They're not also actively on Instagram and TikTok because I can only imagine like how busy they are doing random BS deals like freaking popcorn when in reality they should be doing something that really drives their audience in to purchase something from them you know they have like a clothing line and stuff like that yeah that's pretty cool but they have they should do something that you know their their fans will actually buy if that's what the route they want to go into it would be like if i as a beauty creator came out with cookware like that's not my content whatsoever and i think it just creates a lot of confusion for the fans in a way okay i want to do a blue look today and i don't know how it's gonna go but i'm first going into the shade cerulean sky from the ColourPop and pokemon palette which we love to see <laughs> and charlie was very once like this relatable influencer and now i mean i think she's kind of lost touch with the whole relatability thing and i think when you're a multi-millionaire like them i think it's hard to stay relatable um she was invited to like fashion week and whatnot she gets sent pr from like designer brands i think it's difficult to relate to someone who's doing their tiktok dances in a giant mansion i'm gonna go into the shade ss Anne right here this is the first time in a long time i've done like a blue eyeshadow look i'm just kind of applying that to like the outer part of my eye just kind of stamping and then we're gonna go in and blend it out and i do think you know as you get older especially for charlie's case she was like what 15 16 when she started tiktok and now she's an adult so i feel like you can't always stay the same and but i think also there's a lot of relatability that was inevitably lost but you see that with a lot of influencers you don't see that with just charlie you see that with a lot of influencers who kind of get big they get money and then they're not as relatable anymore and i think that's inevitable for a lot not for all but for a lot influencers i mean we, we've talked about this before like tati westbrook jessica braun is another really good example of that it's frustrating because you know i think people watch influencers because they're relatable because they can you know they're not just like flexing <laughs> so i think that's where a lot of people really struggle with a lot of these influencers is the lack of lack of relatability and charlie is well the whole d'amelio family i should say is like all lacking relatability okay we're gonna go in with the color pop and disney princess arabian nights super shock shadow yeah i love 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 super shock shadows but i sometimes like never reach for them which is ridiculous i need to i'm very curious to hear what what you all have to say about this you know what are your thoughts on you know child stars parents because in a way they are child stars and their parents are taking over everything we're going in with the steel sale day um liquid liner i have the dual tipped one the micro and the original we're doing the original one today I from any drama that charlie or dixie has been in um i sympathize for them because i think it's like a frustrating situation i could never imagine it but it's frustrating to have your to see that their parents are like forcing them to do this but also they're adults and they can say you know i don't want you to be affiliated with my deals anymore or whatever the case is all right we're gonna finish it off with lashes i'm gonna be using the essence lash princess false lash effect mascara and the elf big mood mascara so i really like doing videos like this where I just get to talk about whatever but I really want to know what kind of topics you want me to talk about do you want me to talk about certain influencers certain aspects of the beauty community you know I'm interested and I really like just kind of sitting down having like an open conversation where I can still share my opinions and not necessarily just be like you know a commentary channel you know what I mean if, also, if you haven't checked out Charlie D'Amelio, she's an excellent dancer. Um, she was on stage at the 2020 Super Bowl halftime show with J-Lo. Um, she was one of their backup dancers. Like, 
she's very very talented with dance um i just i uh, love how she's just like so comfortable when she's dancing you can just kind of see it and if you haven't you know checked them out checked her out like go on tiktok check her out she's really awesome all right this is the finished look I'm loving this blue eye look. You know your thoughts on everything I talked about today and um, whether or not you've heard of Charlie, your thoughts on her parents and so on, be sure to check out Cruel World Happy Minds video on the D'Amelio's as well. And I'll go ahead and see my next one. Bye!